This is Bob Anderson from Factory Direct Modulars. Um, <clears throat> I, uh, I wanted to do this video. I've been talking about doing this video for a long time, and then a situation happened just recently, and I thought, man, I've got to get this video out because it's going to address, you know, there's a frenzy going on with housing crisis, housing shortages, all that kind of stuff. And a lot of times people can get caught up into a, uh, into taking a bad situation into making bad, bad decisions. So I'm going to give you a quick story about something that just happened. And by the way, I get these stories literally at least two, three a month. It's very sad. Two or three a month. So I'm going to put this out there so that you, you have this information regardless if you're buying a house in our area where I can service you or somewhere else in the country. I want you to be recognizing the kind of situation, the kind of things that put you in a bad situation. So had a gentleman call me Friday, last Friday evening. Here's the scenario. He, uh, he was, he had already signed a contract to buy a house from a big retail chain that starts with a C. Hey, Warren Buffett, you know who I'm talking about. Okay. And, uh, so, unlawfulness and ethics is going to be the top this the subject of this top of this of this video because i'm going to explain to you how they skirt the law but they don't follow the ethics so this gentleman calls me and he says hey i i just contracted to have a house built on a piece of land that i already own free and clear that has well and septic blah, blah, blah. And I, I just happened to come across your website and I saw your prices were significantly less. So tell me what I'm missing. So I, I said, well, you're not missing any. I mean, a foundation, delivery set, trim, da, da, da. All the stuff is listed on the website. That's what the prices are. And he goes, well, I don't understand where my price came from. I said, well, tell me your situation. He says, well, I went into this retail chain with the C and uh, they showed me this modular home that uh you know was priced at x two hundred thousand or something yeah two hundred thousand two hundred and three thousand dollars and somehow that two hundred and three thousand dollar house turned into a two hundred and ninety four thousand dollar house when it was time for him to sign the contract i said yeah that seems pretty steep i mean ninety one thousand dollars in in him to build a house that uh is 203 grand seems seems pretty high and he goes yeah i i i, I but he says i just you know was anxious and wanted to get the house started again anxious and wanted to get the house started so i said uh well tell me the rest of the situation he says well i said tell me your whole process he says i went in they had me fill out a credit app send it off to the bank bank told them that i could buy a house blah 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 and uh then they had me come back. Uh, they had, they came out and looked at my property. Then they came had me come back in, and then they gave me the updated numbers, which was two hundred ninety four thousand. I said, okay, well, again, I think ninety one thousand to build an on frame mod, which is cheaper to build than an off frame mod, which is the houses we have. I think ninety one thousand seems kind of high too. So that you you sure you got well inside? I got everything. I said, okay. I said uh, I said okay, well. What, what questions do you have about my houses? So he, he said, you know, blah, 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 blah. And he goes, what do I got to do, Bob, to buy a house from you? My loan's approved for $300,000. Okay, folks, for $300,000. I said, time out. Let me backtrack and explain something to you. He goes, okay, what's that? I said, uh, your loan got approved for three hundred grand, right? He goes, yeah. I said, and you're asking me why your house was 294, right? He goes, yeah. I said, it's 294 because the closing costs are going to be about $6,000 on that house. And what does that number magically add up to? And he started using some very bad words. Because the light bulb finally went off in his head as to why his numbers were what they were and i said well don't don't feel bad i said that was strategically done from the beginning it was strategically done from the beginning to use every dollar that they can 
to charge you to max out your loan. I said, unfortunately, it's not illegal. But I don't care what anybody says, it's unethical. Long story short, I'm going to be building them a bigger house, a nicer house, an off-frame mod, and um, so a better house, an actual real house that he'll get a better interest rate on, better homeowner's insurance on, 150% um, more insulation, and stainless steel appliances, all the decked out stuff, and, and, and bigger than the one he was going to get. And it'll be probably about a hundred grand less. So, anyways, let me explain to you things that you, the consumer, need to be aware of when you're out there talking to some of these retail chains. Now, again, I'm going to address: is this illegal or is it unethical? As we're going through this, step one: credit application. When they get you in there and they say, oh, well, yeah, we can, we can check you out for this house. We have, we have leverage with the bank. That's one of those things that they, one of those, one of those slang words that they use to uh, try to make you feel like they've got something special <laughs> that they can get done for you that other people can't. Um, because, they, because somehow they have more control over the Department of HUD than, than anybody else, okay? Which is all crock of crap, but anyways. So, bottom line is, they'll take a credit application from you. Let me explain to you what happens when they take a credit application from you. They're getting all your information. For example, where you work, how much money you make, how much money you have in your checking and savings account. All these pieces of information are used to, in the background, be used to figure out how to get more money out of you. Then they take that credit app. Now, is that illegal? No, unfortunately, it's not illegal because you consented to give them that information. So, um, now let's talk about what they do with that credit application. That credit application is then sent to lenders. Okay, now, <clears throat> let me explain how that works. Because in the state of North Carolina, for example, the company with a C had to spend, had to pay a $4 million fine several years back for steering customers to certain lenders only and da 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 da, -da because this is, where the, this is where the game continues. I'll get to that in a second here. They have to, quote unquote, give you a list of approved lenders and have you pick an approved lender to send that credit application to. Okay. Well, there's some things that can happen there, but those approved lenders are specific lenders that fall into this game. Okay. Some of them happen to even be owned by Warren Buffett. <sighs> Anyways, the other thing that then, that then happens is the credit application goes out, but all they've done with you, the consumer, straight off their website and straight out into their sales location is give you a price of a home and that's it. A lot of consumers, they're so vague about this when they're showing you the homes. There's so many consumers out there that actually think at this, fit, at this stage of the process, they actually think the house is going to be 180 grand. Now, how do you spend two hours at a sales location, walk through a house, go through all the filling out the credit app, Get all excited, even get shown some of the colors, get in your car, go home, and think that the house is 180 grand. How does that happen? It's because they're not being forthright with you. Um, again, is that illegal? No, it's not. Not too ethical, but it's not illegal. 
So, what happens next? Well, what happens next is the lender does the credit. The lender may even collect some, you know, call you and collect some of the pay stubs because some things may not make sense or collect some of the bank statements, all that kind of stuff. Then the lender tells the, the retailer they qualify for X, whatever X is, okay? And that is the new objective of that retail location, that X. Because remember, this price that they told you, say the home for 180, that price means literally nothing. Nothing. They haven't delivered it. They haven't set it. They haven't built a foundation. They haven't done the trim. They haven't done anything. That price is nothing. It means literally nothing. Literally nothing. It's like buying a new car and buying, buying it without an engine. It literally means nothing to you. It's not financeable. Just like a car with no engine is not financeable. They have to put the whole package together. And the funny part is, is while they're walking you through this location and showing you these homes for two hours and all that kind of stuff, it's not like anybody in that place doesn't have an idea what these things cost. They know exactly what a foundation costs to put underneath a house that's 28 by 60 feet long. They know exactly what it costs to put heating and air. They know exactly what it costs to deliver it from the factory that it's coming from. They know these things. But they don't tell you any of that until they get this big old credit application approval from the lender of a certain dollar amount. And then guess what? That becomes the magic number that they go, that they target at. Now all of a sudden, they know what to sell you the price at. If for some reason, the profit that they that they see coming in into the deal because you say you qualify for two hundred grand and you were looking at a hundred eighty thousand dollar house, that's when the whole switcheroo comes along. Well, now we got you approved. Come on in. We just and then when you get in, they gotta well, but we gotta get you in a different house. Okay, and again the game starts all over again. Now it's walk you down from that hundred eighty thousand dollar house to a $120,000 house that magically turns into a $200,000 house. So, is it unlawful? No. Is it ethical? No. Not in my opinion. But are they helping? That's how it's all being portrayed. Doing your credit application is helping you. We have leverage with the bank. Not telling you the price, the total price of the product is helping you because we don't really know what your land's going to need. These are the terms that are being used. So they're, they're, they're helping you by not giving you false information. Huh? There is false information. I left the sales center thinking I was paying 180 grand for a house. I come back and find out I'm paying 280. How are you helping me? Number three, while you're going through this process, which by the way is intentionally delayed and intentionally strung out, and we'll get to that at the bottom. While you're going through this process, every question you have, the answer is yes. So you think we can get this done by, by X? Oh yes. Do you think we can do, do you think we can get this type of a sink? Oh yes. I mean, the answers are yes. Yes, 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 yes. Until you get to step four. And then all of a sudden the no's come in. And, I, and I'm going to explain that in a second. So, again, number three. Is answering every question you ask with a yes against the law? No. Is it illegal? As I said, no. But is it ethical? <laughs> no. Not as far as I'm concerned. And so um, I say just as many no's as I say yes. Because the bottom line is I want you to know what the truth is. Right now. Not at the end. So, number four. Delay numbers on purpose. So, 
Remember now, you left. You filled out an application. Oh, don't forget that you had to give them a deposit so they can go to work for you. We can get with the bank and get you going, get you approved, get you the most amount of money. Don't forget that. They had to take a deposit from you too. Warren Buffett needed your $1,000 because his business wasn't going to survive without your $1,000. So anyways, um, why does it get delayed? It gets delayed because the 180 that they told you before is what you've got concocted in your mind. That's what you think is going on. And you go further and further and further down the rabbit hole of telling your relatives, telling your cousins, telling, telling your neighbors, telling your friends, telling everybody you bought a house. Showing them pictures of it. Showing them floor plans. All excited. So what the point is, and, there, and I can't remember all the sales terms for it because I don't think like an unethical, corrupt person. But the bottom line is the intent is to if is for you to believe you've already bought the item. So that anything that comes down the road after that's got a no in it or 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 is rebuffed, you, you just kind of you just kind of ignore it because you bought. You bought a house. So the numbers are delayed so that they can maximize the money from the lender of the credit app. They can um then bring you into reality with the no answers from the previous yeses. And by the way, they're hoping you forgot some of the questions that they, that they gave you a yes on. Okay, that's, that's really what the hope is. And then, and then delay the numbers so that you're further down the rabbit hole. You've already told everybody you bought a house. And so when they put the new numbers in front of you, not the 180, but the 280, because the lender says you can get 285, you're willing to sign it because it's you know you're three months into this process, and if in the whole process you're trying you have a piece of land under contract and all that kind of stuff, they don't care. They don't care if you lose that land. I can, I, I I had that experience two weeks ago with somebody. Very sad gentleman found 16 acres. He ended up losing the land because he was dicking around with Clayton for four months before he found me. By the time I came along, I wrote him a contract in a day and a half from when we met. It took him four months to get a contract from Clayton. And when he got that contract, it was too late. It, long story, just he ended up losing the land. Okay. So I go back to the question is, are the practices illegal? Well, there's enough attorneys that work at this organization to make sure that they skirt the law within the law. But is it ethical? No. Is there a way around it? I, I, I don't know. I don't know. I don't think within that organization there's a way around it. Because it's, it's designed this way. And it's very disheartening. Ha having been somebody that personally met Warren Buffett once at the University of Notre Dame... I met Warren Buffett um, back in 1994. And as somebody that met him, I find it sad that he runs an organization that is so unethical. Anyways, I hope you learn something from this. I hope you take something from this. I hope you can recognize the rabbit hole that you may be going down and understand that making a decision snap, snap, Giving these people a thousand dollars, falling down the rabbit hole, is um, is probably going to end up in a bad situation for, for you. You're either going to end up with a manufactured home that's way overpriced, that a month after you move into it's worth thirty cents on the they're worth seventy cents on the dollar, if that, or you're going to end up with an on-frame modular home that's really not a modular home that half the lenders in this country would never even loan a dollar for. Um, but you've got it. It's yours. So anyways, I'll talk to you later. I hope this helps. I got a little emotional on that. I dressed up a little for this one because this one really means a lot to me. This is part of the motivation of why I started this business. And unfortunately, with the, with the frenzy that's going on in the market right now, this stuff is happening worse 
than ever. I'll talk to you later. Bye.